Look, Judge, they were humiliated. I mean, honest to God, what happened to the Israelis? Uh, the Golani Brigade, one of their elite infantry brigades, had two battalions, the 13th and the 51st. They were on the Gaza line of contact. They weren't sleeping in their barracks. They weren't this. They were on duty and they got swamped. They got beat by Hamas in a stand up fight. Um, and, and that's a big deal. This is this is like in the Ranger Battalion beat up or the 82nd Airborne beat up or the Marines getting beat up. You don't take that lightly. And Israel didn't take it lightly. And there's a lot of revenge uh, here. They were told to get the border secure. That was the political order down. Secure the border. You can't secure the border if Hamas is dug in on the kibbutz, which are part of the military belt around Gaza. So as long as they were there, they you, you had to get rid of them. They weren't going to turn this into a negotiation. They just went in and they killed everybody. There's a lady who gave an interview very powerful interview and she said there were 20 hostages about eight Hamas fighters and when it was done there were eight dead Hamas fighters and 18 dead hostages she and one other lady survived has Netanyahu acknowledged that his military killed Israelis on October 8th look the some of the Israeli press are trying to um trying to talk about this they're getting the stories out how that's his run run similar uh, things, um, you know, similar narratives of this nature. Uh, but no, it's something that's been actively suppressed. And not only that, but Israel is deliberately flipping the script and accusing Hamas of killing people. For instance, you've had Israeli colonels take people to uh, buildings that have been clearly hit by tank fire and saying, look what Hamas did. Hamas did this. Hamas did that. Now, indirectly, I guess you could say that it wouldn't have happened had Hamas not, not come across the border. But the munitions that destroyed that building and killed the Israelis inside were Israeli munitions. How do you see this ending, given uh, Netanyahu's need to continue a war and his um, indifference to innocent the, the, the suffering of innocent human life? Look, I want this to end peacefully. I want this to end um, in a way that doesn't escalate the conflict. I mean, but what I want and what I think is going to happen are two totally different things. I think Netanyahu is um, blinded by his uh, narcissism to stay in power, um, the hu humiliation that he suffered, the revenge that he's seeking. Uh, I think he's gone too far. We saw that with the uh, with the camp. I think Nasrallah and Hezbollah is under tremendous pressure. Look, if he doesn't go in and attack, uh, he loses all face. Hezbollah has been setting itself up as a defender of Palestinian rights. Um, Israel has never been weaker than they are today. There's never been more justification from a Hezbollah standpoint than there is today to use force. And if Nasrallah allows this moment to pass, which I pray he does because I don't want a greater war, but if he does that, he loses all credibility in the region. The same thing with Iran. I don't want Iran to be involved, but from an Iranian perspective, you will lose face. You, you will never be able to talk about the Al-Aqsa Mosque again if you allow Israel to decimate the Palestinian people. So I'm afraid that on Friday, this thing can get real ugly real fast. I hope I'm wrong. I want peace. I want a peaceful outcome. I don't want America to get dragged into this conflict. But um, things aren't looking good for peace right now.